Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. My name is Diane Jordan, and I am uh, on the admissions team and one of your webinar hosts. Bonnet Finance is a powerful investment approach using scientific methods requiring creativity and critical thinking. This area of finance has become an integral component of tackling financial challenges in the markets today. Consider this. In the world of business and investing, the importance of fundamental financial knowledge and the increasing demand of applying sophisticated and complex methodologies cannot be doubted. Earning a degree that delivers a deep understanding of finance and provides the quantitative tools and methods that many firms in the finance industry value can be a major benefit in today's job market. The job outlook for quantitative analysts is strong. The US Bureau of Labor Statistics lumps quantitative analysis under the broader umbrella of financial analysis, a field it projects to grow by at least 11% through 2026. You will learn from our faculty, students, and an alumnus today how the MIT Sloan Master of Finance has been focused on teaching our students the fundamentals of modern finance, and to explore paths such as quantitative finance that in many ways breaks away from the conventional models. Find out how MIT Sloan's Master of Finance curriculum can help you to achieve this and be a springboard for a career as a quant. If you want to be different, you have to think differently. Before I turn it over to uh, one of our other hosts, Assistant Dean Heidi Pickett, I just have a few housekeeping notes that I'd like to mention. Um, first of all, thank you to participants who submitted questions in advance. We will address as many of them as possible in this webinar. Please feel free to submit additional questions through the online chat during the webinar as well. We have a lot of information to share, and we ask that your questions relate to the topic rather than general questions. There will be many opportunities going forward to learn about the admissions process, additional online chats and events to help with questions about it. Our MFIN website and admissions events page has listings of domestic and international events where we travel um, throughout the fall. And again, I will apologize in advance if we're unable to get to all of your questions. However, however, please do not hesitate to email and bin admissions. And so I'd now like to turn it over to our assistant dean, Heidi Pickett. Great, thank you, Diane. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining today's information session. As you know, today we will focus on the quantitative aspects of our Master of Finance program. From courses to extracurriculars, our MFIN experience best positions graduates for competitive quant roles in finance. In close collaboration with our industry partners and finance leaders, we continue to enhance and add courses to our curriculum to ensure all of our graduates are equipped with the knowledge and skills that every quant must have. Our goal is not only to prepare you for your first position after MFIN, but for success throughout your career. Professor Chen will speak more in depth to our curriculum and highlight some of our quant courses. But first, let me take a moment to talk a little bit more about the rewarding careers that our graduates go into. MIT is uniquely positioned as a leader in finance, math, computer science, and analytics. Employ employers note that our students can take courses and gain knowledge not just in finance, but across these different disciplines, which make our MFIN students in great demand. We'd like to share some employment outcomes for our graduates. This is just a sample of the roles in firms where our students have gone after completing our MFIN program. Of course, our relationships extend well beyond the few firms that are listed here. The main point is that the finance industry is looking for quant talent, and they come to MIT to hire students in our MFIN program. We have a dedicated MFIN networking night to formally kick off recruiting for both full-time positions and internships. Firms including Acadian, Citadel, Aero Street, Quantbot, and many others um, have attended to recruit our students. And this is just one of the many opportunities for our students to get access to quant firms and quant opportunities. As an MFIN student, you have access to dedicated career advisors, 
on-campus recruiting, job boards, and the entire MIT network. Our students and alumni joining us today can share more about the career resources and how they have leveraged these resources to find amazing opportunities. For more detail on our employment outcomes, please refer to the, our MFIN website. In addition to career development and academics, extracurriculars are an important part of the MFIN experience. And here are just a few examples that are popular among our quant-focused students. The Investment Management Club is a student organized, uh, the Investment Management Conference is a student organized conference that attracts over 250 industry professionals. An example from last year's conference was a panel on Mind and Machine Frontiers of Quantitative Investment Investing. With that career and brief extracurricular overview, let me turn it over to Professor Chen to share highlights on our quantitative curriculum and the opportunities to customize your academic experience. Oh, thank you, Heidi. Um, it's a great pleasure of mine to uh, tell you all about uh, our curriculum offerings. Um, as you probably uh, uh, will see, or may have already seen, uh, we have a long list of courses that uh, our students uh, have taken and are taking. Um, so going through all of them is going to be not so um, stimulating, but I think it will be good to probably give you an idea of how we can envision our course offering in terms of three big categories. Um, in terms of quantitative uh, finance, we think about um, there's a block of basic knowledge that everybody sh should have, which is starts with uh, summer courses in, in financial mathematics. Uh, and we offer them in at two different levels, uh, both at fundamental and advanced level. And then going into the fall, we will have uh, financial engineering, which is just the core uh, um, quantitative finance course that covers the basic methods in um, asset pricing, in uh, continuous time finance, and in, um, as basics in numerical methods. And then we also have uh, courses that are focusing on uh, financial data science, um, uh, computer science applied to finance, uh, and uh, uh, more specific talks on machine learning as well. So this might come a little bit overwhelming, but uh, uh, it really is sort of uh, more clear if you think about them as both tools as well as applications. So on the tool side, um, the kind of tools that we are seeing that industry people are demanding from our students are evolving constantly. Uh, more and more so nowadays, we are seeing demand on uh, numerical methods, on uh, data science, on the machine learning side. And that's exactly where we are offering uh, new courses uh, over the last few uh, years. Um, and then another part is uh, on the application side. So you can take these tools in, in many different places, uh, such as in algo trading, in derivatives pricing, uh, and in uh, uh, portfolio management, uh, just to name a few examples. And exactly how these tools are being applied in those places are also different. And there we have our faculty member coming with a lot of years experience to help you navigate through those topics. So I would say that it's a combination of these courses, um, action learning, uh, as far as uh, kind of uh, close uh, work with the faculty members that really prepare you for all these different kind of uh, directions that you might be interested in. Um, and if you can take a little bit more time, I can uh, maybe point to a, a few different kind of, uh, um, I would say maybe career paths that our quant students typically take. Um, so besides what I mentioned earlier about, you know, portfolio management, um, financial data science roles that uh, our students have been increasingly interested in taking, there's also a um, um, constant but, uh, you know, not so small fraction of students who are interested in pursuing uh, postgraduate uh, uh, degrees in, for example, PhDs in um, uh, finance, in accounting, in economics, uh, and in fact, I've uh, seen uh, some pursuing PhDs in uh, uh, computer science as well. Um, so on those parts, because we uh, of our vicinity to a few PhD programs right here on campus, actually you have uh, access to uh, tons of resources there too, um, such as uh, a lot of our students, whether they're interested in PhD or not, they actually take uh, um, uh, econometrics uh, courses from the econ department uh, at PhD level. Uh, and then for those who are really serious about pursuing a PhD, they will go on to take some first year courses in other uh, areas, such as uh, as surprising in uh, microeconomics, macroeconomics, and so on. Um, those tend to work really well in preparing the students, um, getting ready for their PhD applications. And uh, in fact, we have a few students who are 
currently enrolled in these programs that are our former labs. So if you're interested in that, we can talk more about that as well. Okay, so let me talk a little bit more specifically about the financial engineering um, concentration. Um, you can think about the financial engineering concentration is our attempt as helping students who are inclined in the quantitative career to navigate through our courses. Um, there are both required courses under concentration uh, electives listed over here. Um, that kind of broadly speaking covers the, uh, the main components that I mentioned just now. So I'm not going to delve into each one of them uh, again, but uh, I think I want to highlight one thing, which is what the Heidi mentioned earlier, is the flexibility. So besides these kind of required courses and, and uh, uh, electives, um, think about it, financial engineering is really just a kind of a broad umbrella um, that allows you to get the basic financial knowledge and, and mathematics uh, training that you need. Uh, and then opens you to the doors to the many other things that you can actually have access to on campus. Uh, for example, quite a few of our uh, past uh, students would you know, start by taking these courses and then go on to specializing much, much more uh, advanced topics uh, uh, in uh, both at Sloan as well as outside of Sloan. I'm sure you know, uh, later on our fellow student panels will actually be able to speak to that as well. Um, Okay. Great. Thank you, Professor Chan. That's great information. So now I'd like to move on. And I mentioned that we have um, really have the privilege and honor of being able to introduce um, one of our more recent graduates uh, who is joining us uh, and a couple of our current students. They are each going to separately talk a little bit about their experiences. Uh, we thought it would be interesting for them to let you know uh, sort of their background and why they decided to join the Unfit program. Uh, what they've been doing and what they're looking at from a professional and career standpoint, and then specifically to talk to you about um, one of their finance research practicum projects, which is an integral part of the uh, MFIN program and an opportunity for students to take the month of January when we have no classes and work with a company sponsor on a high impact challenge as part of a small student project. So first I'd like to introduce Yusuf. Barada, who is joining us remotely, Yusuf. Hi, hi, Diane. Hi. Uh, good. Yeah. yeah. So, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Yusuf. Uh, I graduated from the MFIN program earlier this year. Um, so, yeah, before uh, MIT, I graduated from Ecole Centrale Paris, which is an engineering school in France. And um, yeah, before joining MIT, I was more like into engineering, mathematics. And then uh, at MIT, I learned all about like finance, uh, quantity finance, all the tools that I need uh, to be successful uh, in my career. And I'm currently a quant researcher within the fixed income desk uh, at IMC Trading in Chicago. Uh, so I joined uh, eight months ago. And uh, yeah, so within the MFIN program, you learn a lot about like the tool that you need um, all the things that I do on a day-to-day -day job, all the tools, the statistical knowledge that I need uh, in doing my research. I learned it in classes like financial engineering, data science and computing, analytics of finance, and all the classes in other departments at MIT. Uh, and yeah, I did the finance research practicum. Uh, I don't know if I can talk about it now. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to in fact, show your slide um, that um, puts in sort of a cap encapsulates the work that you did. But please feel free to talk a little more in depth about it. Yes. So the finance research practicum is a kind of mixed class uh, classroom and project with, uh, with a company that uh, goes from January uh, to March, kind of. So it would work with a company. Uh, on a specific topic. So my project was with Lazar Asset Management in Boston, uh, where our work was uh, to basically web scrape uh, social media like Glassdoor, Indeed, Fairy God Boss, website like that, and get information about like what uh, employees think about their company, uh, and then design an ESG metric. Uh, an ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance uh, metric to rank companies based on like how good uh, the employees think the company and the governance is. Uh, and like we tried to find some signals based on these metrics such that we can uh, predict what was happening. Uh, so it was a very nice project because uh, it gives you a lot of autonomy into what you wanna do research on, but also you, you get a lot of guidance from 
professors at MIT, um, professors Gita Rao, and also um, people working at Lazar uh, about like what you can do and like where you want to get your project to. Uh, I think it's a very great experience to uh, get hands-on on like data, get hands-on like uh, what you can do on a kind of project-based uh, or like research project kind of thing. And a lot of things that I've seen during the FRP, the Finance Research Practicum, uh, are things that I'm currently also working on right now uh, in my current job. Uh, so all the tools that you will learn like, within the finance research practicum or all the classes at MIT are definitely like relevant things that you will need to know uh, if you would like to be uh, a quantitative researcher within IMC trading. Uh, yep. Great. Thank you, Yusef. Also, maybe you could um, talk a little bit about, you mentioned that one of your MFIN activities was um, the blockchain club. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, definitely. Um, so yeah, I think uh, at MIT we'll have so many things to, to do, so many opportunities, so many uh, cool uh, things to do. And like outside of classes, you have opportunity to participate in any like club uh, activities, students led club activities. So I was part of the MIT blockchain um, club where we organized many events to learn more about like the application of blockchain uh, on like on finance, but also on other industries uh, and like mostly like transportation, uh, manufacture, that kind of things. Uh, so it was a very great experience again to learn about like a, top, a new topics that was quite new uh, and like see application in finance, talk with industry leader, uh, people who did their ICO and like talk about it many times uh, like on campus. Uh, and I think again, it's like a great opportunity to go outside of classes, learn new things, uh, like grow your network within MIT students from other programs. Yeah, most of the people that were with me in the MIT blockchain uh, came from different program. Uh, so they had different perspective of like application of blockchain and it was like great interaction to, uh, to be with them. That's great, Yusef. I know a lot about you know, what we talk about here at MIT Sloan is not only the um, amazing skills um, and knowledge that you will learn as part of the program, but being highly engaged in the MIT community. So thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, so let's um, move to our next um, uh, host, who is Cindy Chin, who is one of our current students. And uh, Cindy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Cindy. Um, so my previous background is in pension validation and retirement benefits calculation. So I'm very interested in uh, studying retirement finance or what people call life cycle investing. And Professor Merton at Sloan is one of the world's uh, leading thinkers in retirement solutions. And I'm quite interested in the two classes uh, he offered here at Sloan, uh, specifically with the MFB. And also I really like the 18 months design because it gives me the flexibility of completing the uh, FE concentration and also taking additional courses, both within Sloan and um, main campus uh, and the computer science department. And besides academics, um, I really like that um, the FE program has a very dedicated uh, career service that gives me very uh, strong career support um, during recruiting. And I'm also attracted by the program's uh, very broad uh, alumni network and uh, very deep industry connections. Yeah, right. And maybe talk a little bit about, you mentioned a couple of clubs that you were active in, the Quant Finance and Investment Management Club. Yeah, so uh, one thing I like most about these clubs is that they have a lot of presentations and they have a lot of guest speakers that give me, uh, allow me to know more about uh, what kind of quant jobs are uh, in the industry and what kind of uh, expectations um, I should work towards if I want to pursue a career in that. Right. Now let's talk a little bit more detail about your um, FRP project. Right? Uh, so for FRP, I work on uh, modeling asset class correlations uh, with my team at Yang Yi, and uh, this is proposed by WorkCon. And uh, they are really interested in modeling correlations uh, in a more dynamic way. So what's the correlation behavior and the different market cycles or what people call different regimes. And from this project, I gain a deeper and more comprehensive understanding of both correlations and the hidden market models that we use. And I appreciate that um, all the faculties, um, Professor Rao and all the TAs, uh, including Yusuf, provide sufficient support for us to dive into um, areas that we have no, ex uh, no prior exposure to. And also, I like that FRP offers a wide range of topics to choose from. I believe we have more than 20 uh, project pro proposals for last winter. And this means that you can uh, have uh, the flexibility of working on one that fits your skill set 
or one that you actually want to explore or both. And it allows me to get a better sense of a quant research experience in the industry. And this leads to my summer internship in uh, quant research in as a head patient. Great, great. Thank you, Cindy, for sharing that. Okay, and last but not least, <laughs> um, we have yet another current student who is going to tell you a little bit more about himself as well. Yes, uh, hi everyone. Thank you for inviting me. I will try to touch on some questions that were asked. Um, so, just a bit of my background. I'm actually coming not from engineering background. I studied economics, um, and uh, I was thinking about pursuing my career in PhD. But then uh, I decided not to go into academia and continue my education here at MIT, which was, I think, a great decision. Um, uh, someone asked how can how could people from non quant degrees prepare for MFIN? I think it is very important to have some. Uh, uh, understanding of mathematical concepts and just uh, experience of usage of mathematical language and logic. So I would really recommend taking some classes in calculus, linear algebra, and probability theory, uh, as I think it will definitely speed up uh, your learning experience. Um, and of course, coding is very important in this program. Uh, even though I think, and I've seen many examples when people came with almost no coding experience, and learn it right here, so it's very possible. I believe that, especially for those who want to pursue the career in quantitative finance, uh, knowledge of Python uh, would be very helpful, as it will speed up, again, your learning experience, and you'll be more prepared uh, to dive into your interview process in uh, autumn. So basically, and in my case, I actually was coming to the program not really I wasn't really thinking about career in quant finance. I, was, I remember talking to Heidi and telling her how I want to do private equity, which now seems really strange to me. Uh, but, I, but during the summer, we had uh, this like, really rigorous mathematical courses, such as advanced math for finance, uh, just like financial finance theory. And I got totally hooked into quantitative side of finance. And uh, I decided to get, start my career, um, continue my career in a more quantitative field. Uh, so again, as Professor Chen highlighted, I think uh, what really excited me is the availability of courses be, uh, all around, like besides finance courses, it's long, uh, the opportunity to take uh, courses uh, at all departments across MIT is very helpful and exciting. and this. This is what I really try to uh, like. I, I really try to uh, use this opportunity to the fullest. And I took, for example, a mach machine learning class at course six. I took some uh, mathematics class from Professor Lubov Strang at course eighteen. Uh, now I'm doing a PhD class in economics at course fourteen. Uh, yeah. So there was a question uh, about the course differences between master of business analytics and master of finance. For example, right now, this semester, I'm taking three classes, which are uh, part of core curriculum for Master of Business Analytics, um, optimization methods, machine learning under optimization labs, and analytics lab. So you have Master of Finance students have uh, total availability. Uh, all these courses are uh, total access to all these courses. Um, and there's a business analytics certificate that anyone can pursue if they're more interested in a more broad business analytics skill set. Um, so my summer inter, uh, my summer inter, I will, I will, let's move to FRP. Okay, sure. Yeah. So basically my first, like I would say hands-on experience with, uh, in quant finance was my FRP project, which uh, I really, really enjoyed. It was with a New York based hedge fund, uh, quant bot. Uh, and basically it was started at trying to build a new, uh, kind of generation of value strategies that is based on. Uh, using machine learning techniques to predict uh, companies' earnings. Um, so, what uh, I really learned in this project is how to uh, manage the huge amount of data and how to build effective processes of, of analyzing this data. Uh, Quantbot provided us with all their with their amazing technological platform that allowed us to use uh, parallel computing on the Amazon servers, uh, which was and uh, which was an absolutely new experience for all our team. Um, so I think 
uh, even though like uh, our curric curriculum made me prepare for this project, I feel just having the practical experience uh, really uh, kind of cemented my knowledge and my practical skills of working with financial data. Uh, and the summer, my internship was at Citadel Securities. I was a trader, trading intern. And I can say for sure that um, this just hands-on experience of working with financial data uh, of um, kind of solve, like solving different problems and uh, attacking the financial uh, like phenomena from different sides, from the side of predicting risk management this was very, very important to me. Um, so, and I think what, again, like uh, today's quant industry is really focused on uh, your background in engineering. So many of people who go to quant components are like engineers or like, people from physics, mathematics. But I believe that what kind of highlights MFIN students is this fundamental knowledge of finance and uh, kind of the understanding of the market dynamics, which again can be very helpful and uh, allows us to dig deeper into more sophisticated markets such as fixed income markets, options markets, and I found it personally really helpful. Great. Um, so uh, this is, uh, thank you so much to Yusuf Sinde and Pavel. Um, I'm actually going to not let you off the hook entirely. While we're looking at some of the questions and responding to some of them, I want you to think about one piece of advice you would give to prospective applicants to the MFIN program. So we'll come back to you um, and we'll just take a few of the questions that we've been um, taking a look at. Thank you again for your questions, both the ones from in advance and uh, online now. Great. Um, this is Heidi again, and thank you so much for the great questions that are coming in. Um, there are a few around in terms of um, what does a qualified candidate uh, look like coming into the program? What kind of background do you need to have in terms of your undergraduate studies uh, and um, exposure to the finance industry. So um, there's not one typical profile. Uh, you'll see lots of uh, different backgrounds joining us. Uh, we do have a, a large uh, percentage of STEM undergraduate um, uh, fields coming into our program, whether it's a major or a minor. So uh, whether it's computer science, mathematics, or engineering. But you'll see Pepo, you know, came from an econ major. We have lots of um, econs as well as some finance and um, uh, business management. That said, if you come from a non-STEM degree, um, it is really important that you have a solid foundation in math before joining the program. And we do um, encourage you to um, have exposure and learn coding before you join. Of course, there are lots of opportunities to pick up those skills, but particularly if you are thinking about a quantitative uh, field in uh, finance, um, you'll want to have um, strong coding and programming skills. In terms of um, uh, experience um, in finance before joining or coming to our program, um, full-time experience is not required. Um, approximately 80% of our students join us straight from undergraduate. However, we do look at um, uh, any types of internships, experience, whether it's research um, in the field of finance to show that you have an understanding of um, the industry, the landscape, um, and uh, kind of a, show your passion on why you want to study and continue in the Master of Finance program and how you plan to apply those skills afterwards. Okay. All right, great. So I'm going to go back to Yusef. Uh, do you want to have, give one piece of advice to a prospective applicant? Yeah, I would say be curious and engage with, uh, with everybody. Try to be curious because, yeah, finance is an industry that evolves a lot. So stay tuned with the latest update, what's happening. And yeah, engage with people, try to learn from them. Uh, like people would spend time in like sharing what they know. Uh, we just need to engage and like stay like in contact with them. Uh, so yeah, if you, anybody have any questions about like my experience or anything, like don't hesitate to reach out. And yeah. Great, thank you, Paul. Thank you, so And Cindy. <laughs> uh, so one, uh, my piece of advice is always to keep an open mind, uh, especially if you are interested in quant research, you can encounter different kinds of problems and uh, a diverse background can actually be very beneficial in terms of uh, thinking from different perspectives. Okay, nice, great, and 
Yeah, mine will be more practical advice. So get ready with your coding. Um, uh, like do a little bit of research about just different career paths. So when you come into the program, you understand which kind of fields of finance there even exist and uh, uh, where can you develop uh, yourself. And again, yeah, uh, build your connections. Don't hesitate to contact current students and alumni. Uh, we're always trying to help and give and answer all questions, give advice. So uh, yeah, and enjoy uh, the last year or like enjoy the summer and the winter. So don't worry too much. <laughs> thank you. So thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you have found this helpful. The MFIT application is live on our website now, and we look forward to learning more about you through your application.